What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Redonculus Gaming. Today we're back with another class video. We're going to start with Disc Priest. We're going to go through all four covenants. The first covenant that we are going to be picking on our Disc Priest is Necrolords. And uh, a couple of things that we're going to get into on Necrolords. But before we do, let's first talk about the signature ability that you gain by joining Necrolords on any class. And that ability is Fleshcraft. Fleshcraft, if you're not familiar, is the ability to channel. It's a four second channel and you're able to generate a shield worth anywhere between 20 and 50% of your base health. Um, when you think about Disc Priest and needing you know, another shield, it's probably the last thing in the world that you need. But hey, every little bit helps. It helps with uh, survivability absolutely 100%. So worth uh, mentioning uh, that you get that. However, it's a relatively weak shield in that it can only scale up to 50% of your base health. And um, it, uh, at, at a bare minimum, is only going to cover 20% of your base health. The way in which you get it up to 50% is by channeling it near a powerful enemy. And uh, that will buff it up to 50% after that fall that enemy is uh, is dead. So that's how Fleshcraft works. Like I said, it's a four uh, second cast. Uh, there's a couple of things that you can do in terms of conduits to uh, be able to channel it while moving um, or, or buff it up a little bit more. Uh, we're not going to get into conduits though. For the most part, if you have not seen my videos, what I like to do is just kind of focus on the class ability granted to you by each covenant. And that's generally the way in which I will stack rank uh, each covenant ability and each covenant for a chosen class and spec. Now, before we jump into um, Unholy Nova, a couple of things that you guys need to know. First off, Beta has been really, really, really unfriendly with LVI, at least the way that uh, I run my healer frames in LVI. And so you're going to see a ton of Lua errors. I apologize. I I worked on it, I thought I fixed it, and every time I think that I fixed it, it just keeps popping up, so try your best to, to ignore it, although now that uh, I've called it out, you're going to notice it even more, so apologies for that, but I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, I did everything I could to get rid of the Lua errors, I ran several runs, and, and yet we're still getting them, so apologies uh, to everyone if that's bothering you. Now, as far as the actual ability goes and, and the way in which I'm going to talk about it, I really look at three criteria. The first of which is, you know, is the Covenant ability on Holy Nova, in this case, is it something that is fun to play with? And is it something that changes the gameplay? Is it something that makes you think a little bit? Is it something that uh, overall I enjoyed playing with? Number two, is the ability strong? That's it. Yes, no, maybe so. We'll talk about that. And then last but not least, is it something that's going to enable you to do uh, various content, you know, and not necessarily lock you into feeling especially strong just in M+, and incredibly weak, potentially, in a raid scenario. So, we'll talk about all three of those things. Now, firstly, let's define what the heck Unholy Nova actually does. Unholy Nova is where you put off, like, this mini... You know, green explosion, very much like your your Holy Nova, uh, but it only has a 15 yard radius. And you're going to do a couple of things when you cast on Holy Nova. You're going to affect nearby targets within that 15 yard radius of, that are both friendly as well as unfriendly. The friendly mobs are going to take a base amount of healing, and that'll heal up to about up to six allies, uh, and then. Nothing after those first six allies, uh, so it is a target cap on friendlies. Um, and then what it's going to do is put a debuff on the unfriendly targets called Unholy Transfusion. This is a dot that's going to stay on the enemies for 15 seconds, and it's going to do a percentage of your spell damage. That's less significant. The more significant part is that any friendlies who damage your unfriendly targets that were hit by your Unholy Nova are actually going to be healed for a percentage of your spell power, in this case, 4% of your spell power. So it becomes a passive heal on top of an active heal. So the active heal is the initial Nova. It's not all that strong. It's 119% of your spell power as it stands today. So it's not anything that you're going to be noticing, and it is going to take some positioning to actually get the most bang for your buck out of that initial heal. And then after you've uh, you've cast uh, Unholy Nova and you've got Unholy Transfusion on your unfriendlies, Everyone in your party who is attacking someone that is affected by Unholy Nova and Unholy Transfusion is actually going to get healed by 4% of your base spell power over the course of the duration in which Unholy Transfusion is up. 
So a couple of things, because this one's relatively nuanced, and let's first start with our first criteria. Is this something that is fun to play with? My answer to you guys is yes. I, I really think it is, and uh, the reason for that is that it changed the way in which I was positioning you know, my disc priest throughout fights. I was standing a lot closer than I normally would have, which is a change for priests, but less of a change for people who have mained, you know, uh, Druid in the past, who have mained Monk, or who have mained uh, Paladin, for example, especially if you played on retail at all during uh, during BFA. All of those benefit from standing a little bit closer to melee. And so overall, uh, because I had to change my positioning every time Unholy Nova was coming off a cooldown, which is a one-minute cooldown, by the way, so it's something that you're casting pretty frequently, um, it completely changed the way I was, I was ducking in, I was you know, coming back out, um, I was casting it pretty liberally overall in dungeons, and uh, that was a good thing, and it, it was something that really kind of made me evaluate and think about where I was standing and why. So Unholy Nova um, really allows for uh, a slightly different gameplay and a gameplay style than uh, what really Disc has been for the last couple of years now, and this probably goes back all the way to about Legion. Uh, on top of that, because of the fact that we have more baseline skills uh, within our disc arsenal, um, I found that Unholy Nova was just something that complemented everything else that I was already doing. So um, it puts that dot up there that obviously is going to help with uh, anything that you have your atonement on. Um, it's not a lot, so, but anyone who's actively hitting the targets is also going to get healed. So there's a passive heal going on on top of your atonement healing, on top of your damage. And uh, in some instances, I found myself pretty easily coming in at probably about fourth in DPS in a dungeon uh, on a consistent basis from a pack-to-pack -pack pull. And uh, on some boss fights, I actually landed third. So I was able to put out pretty significant damage while also, you know, relatively healing with ease um, using Unholy Nova properly. And that's taking advantage of that first initial burst heal and making sure I'm getting Unholy Transfusion up. So that was something that I actually really enjoyed from a playstyle perspective. As far as the overall strength of this ability, um, I would say that I felt as though it was a little lackluster in the terms of the actual strength from the healing output that you get from it, but the fact that it essentially freed up more of my time to proactively focus on making sure I had atonements up on the right target and, uh, and that I was able to really damage at will and therefore heal at will uh, at once the uh, atonements were up, I think it's actually in a pretty good place. I won't say that it's overpowered, but I also don't think it's the weakest of the options that are out there. But it is slightly nuanced and something that you really have to be willing to adapt your playstyle to to be able to, to get the effectiveness out of it. So overall, it's in a good place. It's not overly strong, but it's not necessarily weak. I kind of hope Blizzard doesn't touch this one too much. I think it's in a really good spot, and ultimately it's going to really come down to, to what types of content and what you want to do in the game that's going to make this decision for you. Which brings me to my last set of criteria, which is, you know, is it something that is going to enable you to do uh, all types of content uh, in PvE settings pretty easily? And uh, the way I'm defining that is, you look at the Torghast stuff that you're gonna be have to you're gonna have to be doing. You look at dungeons that you're gonna have to be doing for weekly vault stuff, and then raiding. And where this is obviously strongest, in my opinion, is in dungeons because you're target capped in terms of the initial burst heal that you get from Unho Unholy Nova at six targets. So you're gonna easily be able to hit everyone in your party as long as you're positioned properly. Uh, with the initial burst heal for Unholy Nova. And then on top of that, hopefully, once you get good enough at positioning, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to also hit the unfriendlies, and that way you get the passive healing going for the next 15 seconds as they beat down on those targets. Where this is likely going to fall down a little bit is in the raid setting, and where you only have maybe, you know, one target at a time. And the main reason for that is because in a raid, you obviously have more than six people around you, so you're not going to be able to have, you know, uptime in terms of that initial burst heal on everyone in your raid. You will, however, be able to have a, a unholy transfusion up on a boss, which is going to give everyone that base percentage healing back to them. But that's relatively weak and not anything that is going to make a tremendous difference in a raid setting. 
at least the way that it stands today. So while this feels very strong in Dungeons and, and Mythic and Mythic Plus, it's less strong and less viable in raid settings. And then from a Torghast perspective, um, it's it's fine. You know, there's you're probably going to be running again. Same with um, with a dungeon group. You run with five people in Torghast or less than five people. Just kind of depends on your your configuration there. Um, and it's going to perform just fine. So I would say it, it will effectively let you perform in two out of the three main PVE uh, settings that you're going to be doing on a daily basis in uh, in Shadowlands. But as far as raiding is concerned, if raiding is your primary uh, prerogative in Shadowlands, that's where it may fall down a little bit. You're just not going to be able to get the throughput that you would out of maybe a different Covenant ability. But overall, if Mythic Plus is your jam, if Torghast is your jam... Uh, there really should be nothing, at least in current state of, in beta, holding you back from becoming a Necrolord Disc Priest. But I'd love to hear from you guys. If you've had a chance to test this on your own, if it's something that you've absolutely hated or loved, please let me know. Um, I actually, like I said, I had a lot of fun with this one, uh, but I'm always eager to hear what other people think as well.